everything. At one point, witnesses said the woman grabbed a broom from the owner as he tried to keep her at a distance. Then she used the broom to hit him, as you see. Right now we're monitoring something that happened in the Miami Valley. A lot of people are reporting this loud boom that they heard. So we're trying to get a live shot established with Monica Castro. She is uh, in one part of the city, so as soon as we can do that, we're going to go to her to find out what she's been able to see. If this has any connection, that scene does, to this boom we heard about 10.30 tonight. Right, and this is a boom that you heard while you were working on putting together your forecast. Yeah, I was in the weather office, and I was working on some things, and I heard that loud boom. It startled me. I looked outside, didn't see anything, so I'm interested just as much as everybody else that's watching right right. now as to what it was and I know it wasn't meteorological at this point it didn't appear that it uh, was a frost quake because conditions are not favorable for that I even talked to you guys about it being an inversion where perhaps there was a boom somewhere but the sound traveled really far we don't have an inversion either so we'll have to wait and see and hopefully we'll get some answers as far as weather conditions currently it is quiet out there across the Miami Valley chilly in the upper 30s and we are going to continue to fall because we have clear skies and light winds notice the flag there it has been breezy for days and days. Finally, we're seeing the flag just hanging out there with that little to no wind that we'll be dealing with for the rest of the night. That, of course, allows those temperatures to drop. And by the tomorrow morning, we're set to wake up right around those upper 20s. So as you're planning the day tomorrow, you'll want the heavier coat early on, 29 degrees at around 7 a.m. In the city of Dayton, some spots will be slightly colder than that to start the day. As we get into tomorrow, though, we're going to give the clear conditions, uh, give way to more cloud cover and the threat for precipitation. Right now, we have the clear skies, but off to the north and west, notice up towards Wisconsin, there's some snow showers there. Back to the Dakotas, there are some rain showers. That's our next little disturbance that passes in. It will initially bring us clouds, then it will bring us the threat for some spotty rain showers, and then even a few light snow showers. But for now, we'll keep the dry conditions, and we'll stay that way through most of tomorrow. So here's tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. We'll see the sun coming up. We'll have chilly temperatures climbing back into the 30s. Into the afternoon, high clouds begin to approach. Not bad. After 5 o'clock, we'll see more mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies and perhaps a few sprinkles that swing on through. This is with a weak little cold front that passes on by. We'll get that northwest wind flow, and time and time again, we see that cold air that moves in and the threat for a few snow showers, and that's exactly what's expected to happen. Now, tomorrow, we will get warm. We'll get to about 53 degrees once again, and then we'll start to cool back into those 40s late tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. So as we move into Friday, then we have that threat for a few snow showers as you step out the door. It is not going to be a lot of snow by any means. There may be some enhanced snow flurries to a light snow shower spotty at times through the middle part of the day. But notice at 1, 1 1.30 in the afternoon, temperatures have now risen above freezing. We're up close to 40 degrees, in fact, for a high. We'll see some of those snow showers switching over to some light rain showers, and then it quickly exits off to the east as we head into your Friday night. So it's going to be a quick little system that passes through. So when we break it down, this is what I'm tracking for your Friday. Little to no accumulation with any light snowfall that starts out the day. And if it does accumulate on any grassy surface, it will likely melt as soon as those temperatures rise above freezing. Wind gusts during the day will get up over 20 miles per hour, and that will make it feel colder at times as well. And we're going to be looking at highs around 40 degrees, which means our wind chills will likely be sitting around the low 30s throughout the afternoon. But we do warm up, and we will see drier weather for the weekend. 46 degrees for us on Saturday, plenty of sunshine there, but that's closer to normal in the mid-40s. We get to nearly 60 degrees on Sunday with increasing clouds as our next storm system approaches. Notice as we get into Monday, we'll have mostly cloudy skies for the day. There's 4.30 in the afternoon. As we move into Monday night and Tuesday, though, that's when those rain showers start to move on through. It'll also come in with some windy conditions as well. Here's a five-day forecast. Again, an evening stray shower perhaps tomorrow. Most of us will be dry. A chance for passing snow to rain shower on Friday. A great weekend. And then it looks like a soggy start to next week. Meteorologist Kirstie Santini is up with you at 425, and she'll be talking about any threat for some showers later in the day. Okay, good news here, folks. Uh, We think we have found the source of that explosion that folks heard here. You're looking live now, thanks to Monica Castro and her photographer. A live picture here. Uh, Police have confirmed for us uh, some sort of car exploded. This is in the area of Parker Avenue, which is just north of 35 and just west 
of James H. McGee on the west side of the city. West side of the city. And what you can see right now, um, there's a fire truck on scene. Um, and investigators are trying to figure out what happened. We know that the bomb squad has been called in. Um, and they're just as we all want to know what that loud boom was that so many of us heard um, just about an hour ago, um, there